In today's video, we're going to talk about how you test your sprinkler system for electrical failures. And we're going to use the new Armada Pro 50 Digital Solenoid Activator. This has got multimeter built in, and I'm going to show you how you use this to, to test your system. So first and foremost, my dad always taught me, make sure you got 110 volts coming in. You can stick your multimeter in here. You can plug something in there, you know, light bulb if you want to. The first test you want to do to see if your system is working is test for a 24 volt output at the clock. To do that, you need to activate the clock, a specific zone that you want to test, in this case number four. I'm going to give zone four some juice. I'm going to take my alligator clips. One of them is going to go to the common wire that goes to zone four. The other one is going to go to the actual zone four. Now there should be 24 volts on there. On the 50, you've got a VAC button here, F3. I'm going to push that and it's going to tell me how many volts. 27.1. That's a good volt output. It's not exactly 24, but it's close enough to where we know it's working. So if zone 4 is not working, it's not because of the voltage. It's there. The second thing I want to test on my clock is are the wires and the solenoid to the zone good? So I'm connected to zone 4 here, common that goes to zone 4 here. The omega signal symbol, excuse me, is the international symbol for resistance. What we're going to do is measure the resistance out to that solenoid and back to the clock. On an AC circuit, it should be between 20 and 60 ohms. If it's a DC, a typical DC um, solenoid, it'll be between 5 and 10 ohms in that range. And if it's a specialty uh, solenoid, it could be as much as 30,000 ohms for like spike guard, lightning protected solenoids. The nice thing about the 50 is it gives you the actual number so you can decide whether or not it's a, a good circuit. So I'm going to push the omega button. going to settle at 24 ohms. This is an AC system, so that is correct. We know the wires and the solenoid to zone 4 are good and intact. Now we tested this zone 4 for a good, uh, a good resistance measurement, which was 24. If it had been cut or was not intact, it would look like this. Instead of seeing that 24 ohms, you're going to see three horizontal bars, a K symbol, and then ohms. That means basically you do not have continuity something either the wiring is broken or the solenoid is broken but you do not have a complete circuit out to that solenoid alternately if you had had a short on the wire and i'm going to simulate a short here by connecting these alligator clips together what you'll see is in this case two ohms it'll be two or zero or one something very very low less than the five ohm range and that is telling you that somewhere in my wiring i've got a shorted uh, two wires conductors going together creating a shorted circuit. So I can either have a short circuit for the very, very low resistance rating, a open circuit or a cut line, which will be the three symbols with a K and an omega, or I'll get a reading that would be accurate for the type of solenoids that I'm using. If I don't know what solenoid uh, resistance I should be looking at, you can either call the manufacturer of the solenoid or test one that you uh, have access to. If you want to locate your solenoid valve. It's either lost or you want to identify specifically which one you're looking for. The Pro 50 can chatter that solenoid. All right, I'm going to hook to the common wire for zone 7. And I'm going to hook to zone 7. The chattering function is accessed by pushing the 24 volt icon here, which is F3 on the main screen. It comes up with a screen that says off, chatter, or excuse me, on chatter or off. I'm going to hit chatter. Okay, and it highlights the screen and tells you you've done that. And we'll go out into the yard. I'll show you. We're hooked up to zone 7. I'll show you what it sounds like. This is zone 7's uh, valve. The solenoid is located in here. I've taken the cover off and you can hear the solenoid clicking every two seconds. That tells you that this is the solenoid that you hooked the 50 up to. It's called chatter comes in handy for identification or if you've just lost a valve and it's covered up by dirt. Now one thing to note about these, uh, these clicking uh, valves, the 50 does not make the sound. The solenoid does. So each solenoid clicks at a different level based on the specifications for that manufacturer. The other factor that's going to influence this is how much dirt do you have on top of it. The more dirt, the less likely you are to hear it. If it's uh, shallow, you probably will hear it. So this is not a foolproof system, but it is a way to find lost valves. Um, 
The other thing you should note is that the wires to the valve have to be in good shape and the solenoid has to be in good shape for it to chatter. One of the functions of the Pro 50 is the ability to identify where these wires at the valve box are connected back into your clock. The way you want to do that is the tone function. The Pro 50 will send a tone signal out. The Pro will receive it and amplify it. So the way we do that is I've unconnected un, uh, these uh, wires here in the valve box. I'm going to take one alligator clip to the wire that I want to identify, the zone wire. The other alligator clip goes to a ground stake. You'll hear this signal. That's the signal that we're looking for back at the clock. So let's go back to the clock and look for that signal. All right, so we come here to the clock. This is called the probe. It's inductive. I don't have to touch the metal to get a signal. So when I'm near the wiring, you can hear that beeping signal in here. Okay, now it does have a little bit of a metal tip here on the top. And when I touch the wire that is the correct one, you'll hear the signal get louder. This is how we're going to identify which wire I'm connected to out at the valve box. I believe it's this one. Let's compare it. Not as loud. The loudest wire that you get the signal from is the one that's connected to that valve box. It identifies your wires. Other wires are going to give you a signal. So don't get confused that, hey, this wire is giving a signal and so is this one. It's the loudest one. And if you're not sure, take the metal tip, touch it to other metal, and it'll make a much bigger signal. Also has a nice little LED on here. If this was much darker, you'd be able to see these wires. But that's how you use the tone function to identify the wires as they're connected in the clock from the field.